Let's go back to that Texans conversation we were having earlier about uh, leverage and how much leverage Deshaun wheels. Like he can withhold his services potentially uh, at the cost of some twenty million or so dollars, um, and he has a no trade clause. Whereas the Texans, of course, have him under contract and uh, and seem to believe that they are under no obligation and therefore not inclined to uh, to deal him. Um, while we wait for Ashley, I was just gonna say, and when we get her back, we'll you know press we'll, we'll park it again. Not only do the Texans need to do it for all the reasons we talked about, you know, as it relates to recouping the picks that they sent to Miami potentially or just getting back in the first two rounds this year um, and resetting the franchise under a new general manager, letting him really put his imprint on his team. And we talked about it a little bit with Tony Dungy yesterday, and, we, and we've said it in passing, but now I think you gotta, we have to apply it practically. Yeah. I know Texas has no state tax. Hell, Texas has no government, for crying out loud. No state tax and no government in general. I just saw <laughs> Governor Abbott just open it up 100%. Drop the mask mandate and open up the state 100%. So pandem- t- pandemic's over in Texas, right? Um, Amazing. I digress. I Dangerous. digress. So Very I dangerous. know there's no state tax in, in Houston. And, and I know it's a, great, it's a great city. It's a great place to live. But realistically... No free agent that's worth a damn is going to willingly choose to go to the Houston Texans. The only right, that's right. draw they had wants out of town. The face of their franchise has turned their back on, on this franchise. He no longer wants to be there. They have lost all credibility within NFL circles. No player is going to sign up for the Texans if he has options, okay? For that reason, because the Texans can't get chose, as we used to say, they need picks. The only way they're ever going to be able to rebuild their organization into something respectable, something resembling a respectable organization, is through the draft. They're not going to be able to augment and supplement their talent with free agents. Not anymore. Um, it's not going to be a destination. People are going to avoid it like the plague or like the pandemic, as the case may be. So if I'm the Texans, I'm looking for a trade that brings me a quarterback on a rookie contract Mm. who's got some upside. Mm -hmm. Gee, I wonder. Hmm. Maybe they got... Is there anybody like that available? Maybe. I got to check. Yeah. Who's got some upside and some high draft picks in this year's draft and in future drafts, that gi- that gives me control over young, cheap talent. And if you're Nick Casario, if you really want to play it, you, you get these high draft picks and you trade down and you accumulate more picks. It's the only way they're going to be able to build this team. And so that's where I think the urgency really has to come in because even if you keep Deshaun Watson and even if he plays... Even if he let's let's say he caves and decides I'm gonna play because I'm gonna make this money. I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna mess up the bag. I'm gonna get this money. I'm gonna play. You think he's recruiting anybody to come join him in Houston? You think he you think he's no. endorsing this organization to anybody? Right. Right. Now the more likely scenario, if they if they insist on holding the line, is that he's gonna hold out and he's just gonna sit. And now you haven't addressed the quarterback position, and I guess you're tanking for for Sam Howell or somebody um, next year. Because you're going to be awful this year. And again, not very attractive to any potential free agents. So I think from a business standpoint, from a football team building process standpoint, this is an opportunity. Instead of looking at this as a problem or a nuisance, they really got to like shift their paradigm and view this through the prism of opportunity. Because it's a golden opportunity for them if they play this right. Mike, remember we were talking yesterday, I said... This is one of those tough situations, new job situations for Nick Casario. And I use the analogy of you're used to doing one thing in your parents' house. Then you go out on your own and you can choose to do the things that you were raised to do or you can go in a different direction. And so that's where Nick Casario is. Nick Nick Casario spent his entire career, 2001 to the present, 
a 20 year, a generation with the New England Patriots, 20 years. And it's almost, Mike, as if they have the wrong, this is the wrong guy for this situation, for this particular situation. Not to say he's the wrong guy for the general managing job. I don't know that yet. I don't know what he's going to do there. I'm talking about the sensibility with which he was raised in the league to deal with what's here right now. For example, I've made this point before. The great Tom Brady. Tom Brady. The only resistance, the only public resistance he gave to the New England Patriots in 20 years was saying, I plead the fifth. Oh, controversy. Let me load up my guns. You said I plead the fifth, right? <laughs> that was it. Whew, a TUI, stop. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. They asked him, hey, hey does, does Robert Kraft, do Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick respect you? I plead the fifth. And then he decided he wasn't going to come to OTAs. That's the only controversy he had to deal with from Tom Brady. When Drew Bledsoe was there, he didn't like how Bill Belichick was handling him. He traded him because he had Tom Brady. Lawyer Malloy wanted a new contract. I'm not giving you a new contract. I'm cutting you. When Ty Law came to you and gave an unbelievable scoop that a certain columnist from the Boston Globe joined in on, and we did the right thing for the right reasons. <laughs> we didn't do the wrong thing <laughs> for the right reasons. Too inside baseball, man. Way too inside baseball. Oh, okay. Anyway. But anyway, when Ty Law came to you and said, <laughs> I, I, I no longer... I appreciate it, yeah. I know it's great. Uh, we, we, we'll explain that to y'all one day. But Ty Law went to Mike Smith and said, hey, I no longer want to be married to New England Patriots. It's a divorce. It's over. I want to move on. The Patriots just sat there. They folded their arms. And Ty Law was back with his tail between his legs. And Nick Casario saw every episode that I just mentioned. He saw it all. He witnessed yeah. it all. And that's how you do business yeah. in the NFL. Oh, no, Nick. That's not how you do business in the NFL. That's how they did it in New England. And that was years ago. Yeah. Now, you've got to respond. You can't bring that Patriot stuff to this Houston situation because it doesn't. the credits don't transfer. It's not the same situation. I'm a, so he's got to respond. No, I, like I think that. he may uh, be I, the wrong guy for this situation. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.